Fox 2 presents Hancock and Kelly. A good Sunday morning. Welcome to Hancock and Kelly on Fox 2, where we take on the top issues of the week. On the right, Gene Evans in for John Hancock this morning. Good morning, Gene. Good morning. Thanks for coming in. On the left, Michael Kelly. Good morning, brother. Good morning to you, brother. On the agenda, the Missouri legislature defunds Planned Parenthood ahead of voters possibly restoring abortion rights in Missouri. The city removes a refugee couple and their makeshift shelter from the sidewalk where they had been living in front of someone's house for more than three years in South St. Louis. Donald Trump endures a week of damaging testimony in his New York trial and also argues for immunity before the United States Supreme Court. And President Biden says he will debate former President Trump, but he's been saying a lot of things lately that may or may not be true. Also, St. Louis aldermen propose hiking the city's already ultra-high sales tax, and universities, including Washington University here now, continue to grapple with extreme anti-Israel protests and tent camps. But we begin with Republican Missouri lawmakers defunding abortion provide provider Planned Parenthood, even though Missouri is currently under a total abortion ban. This is ridiculous. This is not health care. These facilities should not be in our state. And I'm sick and tired of hearing about it. That November is coming. And this bill will not matter. Because women of this state are going to come in full force and demand their rights back from the body that stripped it of them. The legislature has voted to ban state Medicaid dollars from going to Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood does not provide abortions in Missouri right now because they are banned. But supporters of the defunding measure say any state funds for Planned Parenthood in Missouri, in essence, free up dollars for Planned Parenthood to provide abortions in other states. Missouri voters will also likely get a chance to reinstate abortion rights in the November elections. What do you make of all this, Michael Kelly? I don't understand the obsession with Planned Parenthood of the Republicans, and I know it's hard for them to not grasp that everybody uh, doesn't have the easy access to doctors. And in particular, here in the St. Louis area, a lot of people look for their regular health care to come from Planned Parenthood. Further, they provide uh, uh, contraceptives, they provide uh, uh, other uh, pills that can be helpful in preventing people from being able to have a baby. I mean, it's so contradictory, but it's this, uh, it's this ridiculous mindset. I just don't understand what's going on in Jefferson City that they don't want to prevent uh, unwa unwanted pregnancies. Could this actually improve the chances of abortion rights being restored by voters in Missouri, this defunding Planned Parenthood? I don't think so. I mean, the legislature's been trying to defund Planned Parenthood since I was there years ago, and it keeps getting overturned by the courts. But as far as obtaining health care, there's over 260 federally qualified health centers in Missouri that provide screenings, um, birth control pills and all the things that you can get there for family planning. So I don't think losing Planned Parenthood is going to affect women's health care. The issue of a state appointed police board taking over the St. Louis Police Department just keeps rolling in Jefferson City. St. Louis Police Chief Robert Tracy was back at the Capitol to testify against it in the past week. The legislation calls for a state board of police commissioners made up of four St. Louisans appointed by the governor along with the city's mayor to run the police department. Police staffing has reached a record low under Mayor Tashara Jones with slow or no police responses now commonplace in the city. The city's population is in rapid decline with a growing worldwide perception that St. Louis is dying. Police overwhelmingly support a return to state control, which ended after city voters voted for local control under the city's mayor back in 2012. Mayor Jones appointed Chief Tracy. Both opposed local control. Two questions, Gene. Should it happen, will it? I don't think it's going to happen. It could. What I'm hearing from lawmakers is they want something done about the police. They want more police. They support that. But they don't see this as a plan. This is an action step, but they don't know what the plan is after restoring state control. They want to hear about what is going to happen after that, because just changing who's in charge does not necessarily change the results. Something to that, right? But is there momentum, you think, to push this across well, the finish line? It seems like every session they talk about right. it. Right, and it's palpable right now because of the crime situation that's going on in St. Louis. I worked on that campaign that brought back local control of the police department to the city of St. Louis. I think the city ought to be able to control its own police department. 
This problem is a making of the mayors of her own. Um, she has got these folks coming at her because of some of the policies that her and members of the board have pushed. Now they find themselves in a desperate situation down in Jefferson City where the state's saying, hey, if you're not going to do the job, we will. Let's hope that the mayor and the police chief will come together, find some way to fight this back, and then come up with some comprehensive crime-fighting plan. This is inevitable if things don't change in St. Louis. I'm not sure it'll happen this session. It, there just seems to be a detachment from reality because the mayor and the police chief walk around talking about crime being down. Yeah. And homicides are down, but only homicides, and they're not down below historic levels. They're still at yeah, you know, one of the when worst you're in five a years in spire, history Andy, for homicide. When you're in a desperate in that territory. spire, the last thing you want to hear is, oh, things are getting better. When maybe they've gotten small, incremental better, but the reality is, is your daily experience tells you otherwise. Anybody who's lived in the city of St. Louis knows when they say, oh, crime's down and this isn't happening, you just think hogwash to yourself because you have the daily experience. Right. Hopefully, we will continue to make steps towards pushing back on crime. I think this red light cameras and other things can help bring that to the, but at the end of the day, it's gonna take more police and leadership. That's what this city is starving for, leadership. You said this isn't a plan, right? Right. But what would the plan be, especially from the state perspective? That's, there is, I don't know that there is one. And I agree with Michael though. I think that the threat is out there. I, I think they've got maybe another year. If the city doesn't get it together with the police, I think they will. I, I don't think it's going to happen this year, but there are a lot of folks running on this issue. They get elected, they're going to come down, and they're going to want to clean house if something doesn't happen. The St. Louis Board of Aldermen is proposing a hike in the city's already high sales tax rate. The half-cent sales tax hike would push the total sales tax for things purchased in the city of St. Louis to more than 10%. The rate is currently 9.67% already. More than half of that is from city sales taxes. The new tax would go toward improving early childhood education with no specifics on what exactly that would mean. City voters would have to approve this, Michael Kelly. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, the general principle of early childhood education, it's a great principle. In fact, it's one of the things that was in the Ferguson Commission report that came out that said this is really something the St. Louis area ought to be doing. So kudos to those who are bringing it up. At the same time, we're bringing it up at a place where our sales tax is at 10%. It's unheard of. It's 10%. It's unheard of and going to continue to go up. And there's going to be less and less margin to raise this. So the, the real problem for me as a voter is, yes, I want to support early childhood, but you are the same people who are telling me that you need more money to pick up the trash. You're the same people who need more money to do policing that you're not doing properly. And this is a solution. We can't keep throwing money at problems in St. Louis. We need leadership and plans. In this situation, though, these are our youngest people, also our most vulnerable. They deserve the support. It will pass in the city of St. Louis. Whether it makes an impact, we'll have to wait and see. Jim. Yeah, I, I don't think many of us have a lot of faith in the city's ability to be good stewards with money. Obviously, we'd love to have quality early childhood education. I would love to see you know, families be able to get a tax credit for working. So if you have working families, they could get a refundable tax credit and use that money themselves, and that would create more opportunities because people would have more money to spend on childcare. But this is just a boondoggle. They're gonna blow this money like they have with everything else. They can't pick up the trash. They don't wanna hire more police. They've got homeless people everywhere. I, I don't think anybody trusts them with the money. And the other reality we have to come to is 10% taxes, that hurts those at the lowest of That's the right. part Absolutely. of the economic scale the worst. And the more we keep throwing on sales taxes, et cetera, in the city of St. Louis, the harder we're making it for those to make their way. Well, the city of St. Louis has removed sidewalk squatters from in front of a South St. Louis house after more than three years. A city crew demolished a dwelling made out of tarps and shopping carts where a Sudanese refugee couple had been living in squalor for more than 1,300 days. City social workers and the International Institute had been conducting regular outreach to the couple, hoping to get them to accept available services and housing options. A couple of residents finally sued the city on public nuisance grounds a couple of months ago. City officials say the refugees now do have a place to stay with physical and mental health services available, but Gene... Past attempts have failed. This couple's been squatting in various locations for more than a decade in South St. Louis. Um, 
What do you do? What's the city to do? This is really sad. I mean, I think they should have been moved a long time ago. When we talk about fairness, you got to think about fairness of the people who live in that community and contribute to the community and pay taxes in that community. It's not fair to them. And it's also not fair to this couple. It's not healthy to be living on the street. They should have been removed long ago. I'm glad they finally done it, but we cannot allow people to live on the street. They're defecating in the street. They're living in squalor. That is not a city or a country that we want to live in. The homeowner couldn't believe the view of his sidewalk cleared. It's been so long <laughs> since he'd seen it. Right. Is this not the perfect synopsis story of what goes on in St. Louis? Some bad actors go out there and act. Everybody wants to, you know, who's in charge politically, wants to defend the bad actors and not the taxpayer. 1,300 days? These people squatted on somebody else's property and the city could, could just now muster the chance to do it? Mind you, nine months away from an election. <laughs> uh, that they suddenly are going and getting involved in this? Look, at, this, is, this is the real problem that's going on with St. Louis. We are worried about those who are bad actors or who are making particular choices as opposed to those who are paying the taxes and want the basic government services. A perfect synopsis of what we're dealing with. Up next, our quote of the week comes from Donald Trump's criminal trial and protests on college campuses across the United States and now at Washington University in St. Louis in support of Palestinians.